you call a repeat offender. I repeat, I will offend again. I get my orders from a higher source. Holding cell in this court and set up for observation. What is this all about? What's this, guy, What's this all about? It's about official OCP business, so please get lost. I think we got four or five days to set up there. This is bullshit! I take my honor from. When you're at rest, you will sit in the chair. Yes, I understand. What about tracking? You can check his exact location at all times with one of these. Now, how does he eat? His digestive system is extremely simple. This processor dispenses a rudimentary paste that sustains his organic system. Tastes like baby food. in Cyberland coming back to another film review whoa um, on to a one of the defining films of the 1980s definitely for sure Robocop so I'm going to backtrack a little bit about the history of how I kind of came across this. And I, I think um, we'll, we'll go from there. So at some point, I was a kid. Um, me and my cousin, we were in Reno Valley, you know, hanging with our grandparents. But everybody was watching some movie. And I didn't really get to watch it. I just remember all of a sudden, my grandfather said, get them out of here, shit. And um, it's like, I don't, I, I, I know what happened, but I didn't see the scene. And all of a sudden, me and my cousin were snatched up off the floor and taken to the garage for the next like 10 minutes. And we were like, why we gotta stay in here? And they were, we were just told, you guys can't come back in. There's something going on that, that the adults are watching that is not appropriate for you guys or whatever. Um, and to this day, I got a, everybody in that room, um, my aunts, my, my mom, my grandparents, I got to say thank you for that because um, when I finally saw that scene, and anybody who's watching or seen this movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's only one scene in particular. Um, I am very happy that I really did not fully see that scene until I think I was in my teens. Because um, even when I would watch the film, <coughs> I would never watch the beginning of the film. I would never start at the beginning because that scene 
uh, was very traumatic. I mean, I, I just I just remember the screams of the scene. I, I just, but I never watched the scene. It wasn't until my teens I finally did see it. And at that point, I think probably because I played a couple violent video games to an extent, I was kind of able to process it. Um, but the crazy thing is, as I've gotten older, that watching that scene again is, is rather um, disturbing. Um, it, it, uh, it does get my, you know, it does kind of get me a little on edge where I kind of don't really want to watch the scene. Um, sometimes, I'll, uh, to, sometimes I will skip that scene and just get to after the fact. I, I don't find, I just don't like watching that. Um, and I have to say, I've seen a lot, I've seen thousands of films. I know I've seen over a thousand films, definitely. And besides another film, which I will never review and never watch again, Hostel, um, this scene in Robocop is probably one of the most um, disturbing as I, I ever said to serve but what it, it's very it, it's just it puts me in a position where I just you know watching the rest of the film is entertaining but at the same time um, I'm just my mood has completely changed moving forward like like if I was happy before I start watching the film even though I knew I was walking into because I've seen it so many times like my mood just changes after that scene that's how gruesome it is to me um, and then the crazy thing is there's two versions of that or almost three versions of that scene that I've come across too. Um, take your pick on how you want to watch it. It's, it's just, um, it's an awful, awful scene. Very disturbing. And I, I wonder if some, some hands were being greased or something with money because um, I, I don't even know how RoboCop was able to be uh, rated R in the theaters. I, I just, I, I, I still, that's one of those films where I have a, a very hard time trying to process how did that happen? Who, who allowed it? Um, because RoboCop essentially is a rated X film and there's no nudity. That's the thing. There's, I don't recall any nudity from the first film, but it is so graphically violent with killings in the film that I don't see how it could be anything but that. Um, and the language adds to it too, but the but some of the killings are just... Um, they're just... I, I just... I don't... I don't know how they, they were able to do it. I just don't know. The film itself is a classic. Robocop is a 10 out of 10 yes sirs, hands down. It's one of the greatest films of the 80s. Um, the cast was wonderful. Um, <laughs> the gentleman that plays on the 70s show, The Father, he plays uh, Clarence Bodiger. He, there have been, I, I've seen so many films with different villains and stuff. T-1000 was probably one of the most terrifying villains to me of the 90s because he didn't say much and, and just... How he conducted himself made him terrifying. Clarence Brodicker um, was, to me, the, the the most terrifying villain of the 1980s. This guy was the epitome of just evil, but he was so he was always calm and collected. It was very rare when he would he would just get angry, angry. But he would you could be talking to him and just t talk about the weather or something. And the next minute, he has no problem just shooting you in the head just because he just felt like it. Like, that's how terrifying this guy was. Um, and he rarely lose, loses his cool. And he has no problem killing anybody. And I think that's probably what makes him so scary is just he the being so calm and collected about when he does it. And... Anybody can get it with him. That this, this, if I ever ran across that guy, I swear I would just run. As a matter of fact, 
I wouldn't even be in the city that this dude is in. Anytime he comes to this city, I leave. I go somewhere else. I won't even. I, I just stay a million miles from this guy. That's how scary he was in this film. His crew were, you know, they they were just as bad. But he, there was a reason why he was in charge. Definitely. Ronnie Cox. He was also in Beverly Hills. He was Bogomel in Beverly Hills Cop. Um, he's kind of the one in charge of everything. He's terrifying as well, but at least with him, it's almost like if you just stay out of his way, and just if you were working at OCP and you just stayed out of his way and did your job, he would be less inclined to want to inflict harm on you as long as you stayed out of his business kind of thing. At least he could be reasoned with you. You could just be like, oh, good morning, um, Mr. Jones, how are you doing today? Have a blessed day. Keep it moving. I, I, I wouldn't see him being really like, I need to get kill that guy. You know, I need to send some like, it, it, he's just, he was terrifying, but he had a way about, he just didn't attack anybody, you know? Whereas Clarence, it just, it, it almost seems like sometimes it was just random for him. Family's walking down the street and he'd just be like, he would shoot them just because kind of thing. You know, he just came, he just had that vibe. So the film itself is about um, a cop who transfers into a bad precinct. He just wants a change in pace. And uh, he gets killed on the first day on, the, on his new assignment. Not only does he get killed, but he gets brutally killed. Uh, probably one of the, um, the way he dies is, is, is probably one of the worst scenes in any film I have seen of violence um, that I can recall. I, I I don't I don't feel there's anything that matches that scene to me. Um, at least, you know, because there's some over-the-top stuff in films, but just the uh, the amount of brutalness that, that's perpetrated, I, I have yet to see a film that's captured that since that time. Um, and because he signed some documents before he died, um, OCP is allowed to do what they want, confiscate his body and utilize it. And there's an organization in OCP that wants to get rid of the crime so they can build a new city. And they create Robocop. And Robocop, for the most part, is whooping ass. He's putting hands on criminals. But then he starts to... I guess Murphy's spirit starts to uh, resurface and he starts to regain his memories on who he was and what happened to him. Not all memories, but starts regaining little by little. And whereas at the beginning he was fully machine, by the end of the film he becomes more human as what he used to be. Music was cool. It has it has some it has a memorable score. Most people will recognize it if you hear it. Um, the cast was was great. Um, <coughs> The action was just probably the standard of the 80s. I, I just say um, the violence was just, I, I just, I don't know how they were able to pull it off. Outside of that, um, it's a classic film and, and Peter Weller was amazing as, as Robocop. I would say um, if you're gonna watch it, just prepare yourself for what you're going to see. Just keep an open mind. This, just understand this is going to be... Have the mindset that this is going to be very violent. Do not allow your kids to watch this film. And I mean that wholeheartedly. I, I, I wouldn't allow... I wouldn't... I, I, my kids are still not allowed to watch this film. My oldest is, is going to be 15 soon. Um, that, no. No. There's just certain... This is one of those films... You'd be surprised what type of tra trauma it could cause to a child to see some, some of the things in this film. Um, it's not no family film. It's not a chick flick. It's not a film that I would say you would just watch with your spouse, too, unless she's um, able to, to comfortably sit through something like this. That, that's how I would put it. Um, to this day, again, it's just... One of the most graphic violent films I've ever seen when it came to guns. But nonetheless, it's still a good film. So with that being said, I will catch you guys on the next one. Take care.